20% off at the cash store and Insta loans. Same chat. Brought to you by Sunkissed Ester C. Soft Chews Vitamin C Supplement. A delicious, chewy way to get vitamin C that helps maintain healthy bones and teeth. This moment brought to you by Harmony Airways. In a few more weeks, Paul, Stephen, Jack, and Gilles hope to get to the top of Parliament Hill. On January 23rd, we will crown a brand new Prime Minister or re-elect our last one. We know from past elections we can expect lots of promises, a few new policies, new polls, and perhaps a serious gaffe or two. Today in Studio 4, we've invited three young politicos who someday may shoot for political gold themselves. In the meantime, they are full of opinions about why they want, who they want to form the next government of Canada. They will be with us for the entire hour, and we invite your phone calls. Joel McLaughlin, Coco LaFoca, and Ryan Stewart are with us in our Studio 4 living room. They are relaxed, but not iffy about who they support in this federal election, and they are passionate about why. Joel McLaughlin is a member of the Conservative Party of Canada. Coco LaFoca is president of the Young Liberals of Canada in B.C., and Ryan Stewart is an organizer with the New Democratic Party. It is my pleasure to welcome our official political panel to Studio 4 to mix it up and tell us more. I call you official because... You are. You're our only one so far. <laughs> Thanks for having us back. Uh -huh. Glad to be here. We're minus uh, the distaff side. We had a, a female last time, and she's gone to Ottawa or something, being elected. Do we is know? Denise, was that her name? Wait, was Denise? Oh, she's, she's back. She is back for the campaign. Oh, she's back for the she, campaign. Yeah. She just sent you in her place, or what? <laughs> <laughs> she got tired of it I, the I, last I time. I had to take the fire for her today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coco, how, how and why? did you get involved in, in Canadian politics? I got involved uh, for our volunteering for Paul Martin's leadership. I believed in uh, the vision that he had for this country. I thought there was a tremendous opportunity for the uh, things that we want to do, uh, where we, we, an opportunity for us to move this country forward. And I think the Liberal Party of Canada is the only party that is consistent with the values that this country has, the values that this country holds dear, and, uh, and com committed to, to volunteering and, and serving in public service. And you, sir? Well, I got involved uh, a couple of years ago when I first got when I first went to UBC as an undergraduate, and uh, walking around the clubs' days tables, and uh, I saw the Young Conservative Club at UBC, and and uh, start, went to one event, and I met uh, met Peter McKay, and uh, got really involved, and uh, started working a few local with some uh, with some local uh, some local events, and, and met some people in the party, and gradually just got more and more involved. Went to a few political conventions and uh, worked really hard to, to bring uh, the two conservative parties together before when they were separate. And uh, here I am today. Were you born into a conservative family? Uh, is it in your genes or, <laughs> or were you an upstart? Well, actually, my dad recently moved uh, to San Francisco. Uh, he's, quite, he's quite liberal in his views. And uh, we, really? we, we, disagree, uh, we disagree on a lot of things. Uh, my, mom, my, mom's, uh, my mom's a little more on the conservative side. But, uh, but certainly not as super involved as I am. But, uh, but there's some hope for my younger brother. He's now a party <laughs> member and working on a local campaign. So You've got him, have you? Okay. Yeah, I think and, so. <laughs> and Ryan, you? Well, I, I guess I got active in working on uh, sort of progressive issues uh, in my community when I was 12 years old. Started selling uh, little pencils with slogans on them to do make donations to different uh, environmental organizations. 
uh, sort of was active in issues when I was in high school battling the Surrey School Board around uh, the same-sex book issue and actually got active as a, a volunteer host on a, a Shaw community TV program that used to be broadcast out of uh, your former Semiamu studio uh, mm. uh, back in the day, Mestiza. Um, so I've always had a role in uh, community issues, uh, in uh, getting involved in those things that I think are, are important and, and trying to get results on those things that I think are important. Um, got active in the NDP just after 2001 after being a supporter for quite some time. My, my grandmother, I think, was a strong supporter, instilled sort of values of caring for others and, and thinking outside of one's own narrow interest in me. And uh, I think Jack Layton and the NDP uh, sort of embody that, uh, that, that ethic that was instilled in me. Um, and I've really just appreciated the opportunity to get to know other progressive activists in BC and to uh, uh, contribute what I can to uh, the, the change mm -hmm. that the NDP is trying to bring about and, uh, and getting results, sure. uh, getting At this results for people. At point, it looks like a two-horse race. It does. It looks, it's Harper or Martin. Not not that Leighton won't get some support. Uh, is that your take on this, or what well, do you I, think? I don't accept, accept that it's a two-horse race. I mean, if you're spending a lot of time reading the, the Globe and Mail or the National Post, uh, uh, you know, uh, certainly that's the spin that the Conservatives and Liberals are trying to put on it. Uh, that uh, messaging, I think, is quite irrelevant here in British Columbia, where uh, throughout the province there are many, many three-horse races. Uh, in a lot of those cases where there are two-horse races, it's a race between a New Democrat and, uh, and a Conservative. Uh, I quite frankly find it uh, rather insulting uh, uh, to, to hear uh, Stephen Harper say, we've got a choice. We we can choose corruption or conservatives. Uh, I think Canadians need to remember there is another way. There's a party that they can vote for that stands for the things that uh, that Canadians, I think, believe in, and that's uh, that's Jack Layton and the NDP. And uh, the more New Democrats there are in in this next Parliament, I think the uh, the more good things we're going to see done, like the uh, the recent uh, NDP budget bill that put. $4.6 billion to uh, those, those things that are important to Canadians as opposed to the tax cuts that, uh, that uh, Paul Martin proposed and that Stephen Har Harper uh, wholeheartedly supported. And speaking of budgets, uh, certainly Martin has said a couple days ago the Liberals have balanced the last nine, I think. We, we have once these guys were done with our country's finances. I mean, let's let's remember what shape this country was in the 1990s when Brian Mulroney was done with it. We were on the brink of a peso crisis. Um, and we're in a position now where we're able to invest in health care, able to invest in daycare, able to invest in armed forces, able to... That, that's, of course, Penny, what the Liberals are, are telling us they're going to do. But as we hear election after election, Liberal promise made, Liberal promise broken. Uh, of course, we've heard today from Paul Martin uh, an announcement on support for uh, students trying to get a post-secondary education to try to reduce uh, uh, tuition fees and to increase accessibility. Well, let's not forget that it was Paul Martin as finance minister between 1991 and 2001 who cut more than $3.5 billion from transfer payments to the provinces for, uh, for post-secondary education. So yes, Paul Martin balanced the budget. It's been on the backs of Canadian students, uh, Canadian working people, uh, and, and, and Canadian poor. Uh, he's here making these promises in this election. I'm not sure why we ought to believe him Brian, now any more than we that's uh, a bit of a should have believed him in the past. I mean, we have the best G economy in the group of seven. We are the only country in the group of seven that's turning in federal surpluses. And my question to Ryan is this, exactly how, because it's a fact, on January 23rd, Paul Martin or Stephen Harper is going to become Prime Minister. That's a fact. Let's not, let's not underscore that. Okay, Joel, let's go over to you because you're strangely silent. Well, as the Liberals and NAP want to duke it out, uh, that's fine by me. I, you know, the, the Conservatives under Stephen Harper have outlined our plan and our platform, and it's a platform of ideas. And uh, we've seen that the Liberals only come out with these promises in election time. And then on January 24th, they're going to completely forget about these promises, whether they're in opposition or not. It's, it's and they're going to completely forget about them. Uh, we have no reason to believe them. They have no credibility left. Whereas we've outlined our plan, and we've been very consistent throughout the campaign. And, uh, and I think, quite frankly, Canadians have seen that the Conservatives have offered the best plan. What and that's why we've got the momentum right what now. What do you see as the make or break issues in, the, in this particular election? Uh, the question always is, what's the question going to be on the ballot when you go to mark your ballot? What, what is the issue or two of the key issues you think will drive it? Well, I think number Today one is, is change. Can change tomorrow. Is change. change. We've seen that Canadians clearly want a change in government. For the past 12 years, we've had a government that's been ridden by scandal, ridden by corruption, and it's just quite frankly run out of ideas. They have no more ideas. And they have no more promises they can give Canadians except empty ones. And they see now a conservative government and a conservative uh, leader, Stephen Harper, that's outlining his vision for the country. And it's outlining a positive vision, one that gives Canadians real, uh, real solutions for health care, a uh, tough on crime approach, and we're going to give Canadians more money, and we're going to clean up Ottawa.